on the point of on uncon uh, uncontacted tribes, it's interesting to think about what kind of civilizations have there been. Yeah, this is something that you've talked about a little bit. Uh, Graham Hancock has uh, written about ancient civilizations instead of challenging the con conventionals or the mainstream thinking about the the civilizations that have been there in the Amazon. Can you steel man and criticize the idea, so the pro and the con of the idea that there have been ancient, advanced ancient civilizations in the Amazon? Like how much do we know? What, what are the, all the possibilities of what's in the Amazon in this past? So like when Oriana went down the Amazon, the reports were that there was great civilizations in the Amazon. And then, you know, a few hundred years later when people got to actually check up on this stuff, it was all gone. And so was that because of disease that we wiped out all these civilizations and these communities of people? Potentially, probably. Was he just wrong? Probably not. This is a guy that navigated by the stars back to Spain after building his own boat. Like, yeah. or did he, you know, or, or was he trying to just, I don't know, I don't know. But there clearly is a long history of complex civilizations in the Amazon, 100%. There's no one that can deny that. The thing that I reacted to was that I've heard videos, I've seen moments in podcasts where the narrative becomes not, there's more ancient civilization information in the Amazon than we previously thought. Mm -hmm. True statement. We're discovering with LIDAR, and this is what Graham Hancock is talking about, that we're discovering constantly that there's there was more civilizations than we thought in various places. Mm -hmm. The place where I take offense is where they start to say that the Amazon, there's actually articles that that are titled this, that the Amazon is a man-made garden, mm -hmm. which is not true. So the actual, which I think is a really different idea, that the uh, the entire ecosystem, everything we've been talking about, all the species, yeah. uh, all the forestry and the different, just life, life, one of the most diverse ecosystems on earth is initially created by humans. It's ridiculous. Well, it's not, first of all, it's unlikely, but it's not ridiculous. So we can't, well, there's no ridiculous in um, in science. <laughs> no. But the complexity of life is very difficult to engineer. As, as you, the, the more you study about biological systems and so on, it's very difficult to create the kind of things that nature is able to do. That said, I don't know if you've heard, but the entire earth, the world has gone through a pandemic recently. And if, and everybody said, of course, it's natural origins. Yeah. Viruses mutate all the time. And nevertheless, it seems more and more likely that in this particular case, it was of an artificial origin leaked from a lab. So humans are able to create stuff, sure. at least modern 100%. technological, uh, genetic engineering. We made golden retrievers. <laughs> Come on. You can't be that nice and that good looking. <laughs> uh, used to be a wolf, yeah. But so that bothers you because it it allows you to think that um, we don't need to preserve the Amazon. We can always engineer it. Yeah, exactly. Then just this is just to me that's a slippery slope. Like I totally, I'm. It's just it's so quick from I'm a fan of expeditions to find ecological ruins and and to learn more about the ancient civilizations. To which I don't think is what he's putting out is that then sort of like news articles, which I think they're trying to bait you, where they're going, was the Amazon man-made? And it's like, yeah, you know, because then you get a, you're gonna get a Brazilian president to go see, see what they said? It's man-made. So we might as well continue to engineer it and manage it. And it's like, there's such complex systems and interactions and such a, such a giant web of life there that at least in my opinion, mm -hmm. is clearly one of the most authentically natural things. And again, are there things that we've engineered? Do the uncontacted tribes, sometimes they, they have banana plants that they've stolen and we can see it from the air that they've, they have banana plants. We made banana plants, that's engineered by us. We know for a fact. Um, so but, agricultural engineering. Agricultural engineering and stuff like that, but suggesting that the Amazon basin, yeah. you know, it's just, it's just a weird way to think about it. I've just heard people 
dismiss the conserv the the protection of the Amazon based on the fact they're like, oh well, if people made it and it's such a giant leap from 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 the, from zero to a hundred, um, you know, is there slash and burn that the ancient civilizations did? Of course. Are there areas that were affected by people? Of course. I just get worried when we start talking about it was a man-made thing. Yeah, hear you loud and clear on that. And I personally think that's completely separate from wondering about what the ancient civilization had been able to accomplish. Oh, sure. It's almost really sad because if all the humans on earth die now, how long does it take before all signs of humans ever existing disappear? Ooh. For the most part. Um, from an alien perspective. How, what timeline are we talking about? I mean, like, I mean, there's, there's like a hundred thousand years. Like, it could be less. It could be, be less. less. It could be like a, a few thousand, because a hundred thousand is complete destruction. A hundred thousand is like nothing. But but then it could be in, in just a few hundred years. You yeah. s- it starts becoming. You're gonna the, the government of the alien civilization is gonna have to pay quite a bit of money to do the research <laughs> to find because they're gonna find other life first. They're sure. gonna find the dolphins and the fish and so on. They're gonna find the trees. Maybe the trees are the interesting thing. Sure. The, the buildings are not that interesting. They crumble. Like the humans, they but crumble. there must be examples of cities that have been left un, unattended for a few decades and like how quickly the the, the plants push up through the street yeah. and everything starts to get broken down. If and, you really look, you'll be like, oh, there's some interesting geometry here sure. for the buildings and so on. But most most of the, the computer stuff, yeah. all, of the, all the stuff of the past, Hundred years, the airplanes, all of that, all the technologies, all of the paperwork that, oh. all the hard drives that store all the information. I want to, I want to actually know how long it takes, like a seven forty seven to like biodegrade, like how, like if you just leave it there, sitting on the runway, society stops. Yeah, how long does it take for that thing to disappear? Like that's completely a weird completely versus uh, to a point where it's unidentifiable might be different, but sure. I mean, the, the point I'm trying to say here is as you've brilliantly put the the amazon churns yeah oh yeah and the fact that i, I wonder throughout its history how what much? are the peaks of the oh, yeah. awesomeness <laughs> well how many banana how many agricultural einsteins of bananas yeah were there the creating different kinds of ideas different kinds of geometries different kinds of tools well yeah look what the incas did i mean the incas you know machu picchu i mean when they found when hiram bigham found machu picchu it was covered in jungle you could hardly see it and i mean the the stonework they did much like what the egyptians did with the pyramids a lot of it we don't really understand how they did it if you come to the jungle you got to go to machu picchu because it's not far from there and i usually like i'm i'm the person like i i won't I don't usually go see like the, you know, like I've never been to see the Taj Mahal after living in India for five years. Like I'm just not. But when you look up and you see Machu Picchu, you go, either they were communicating with the gods there or these people were so smart that they knew that anybody they brought, they were going to impress. They, they've built something there that when you look up at that mountain, you go, whoa with those giant stones the beauty of it you know it's just it's just stunning to imagine that there was this culture of people that that could achieve this and so through the amazon i mean that's sort of up in the andes but there's all kinds of stuff in the amazon there are places where they say there's can um pyramids beneath the canopy that we just don't know about um i mean there's it's endless if you had uh billions of dollars trillions of dollars what what would be the efforts in the amazon for the for both conservation and for exploration all right well first thing is tied together yeah exactly first arrest the the deforestation so we don't have an ecological crisis on our hands we don't want to keep losing species losing indigenous cultures losing the climate stabilizing services that the amazon provides as a whole stop that that's my first mission next then we can play and then it's like let's go find i mean you I've, I've flown over the amazon and a cessna and it's like you see things where you go we have to go see what that is you know weird lakes yeah. or or shapes in the jungle that don't make sense that are that are that are strange and like so even at that level you can see weirdness you can oh, see yeah. different oh yeah like oh, <laughs> signs yeah. of possible awesomeness oh the jungle is so weird and here's the other thing is that most so like the region i've been working in you see where the researchers go there's certain 
biological stations. There's certain places where like, oh, like this university has a relationship with this, this university is this. So everybody goes to the same few study sites and then they walk on the same trails and they have the same guides. When you fly in a Cessna and you fly a few hours away from all that and you see a, a tiny little tributary and then you fly for 40 minutes over unbroken green, just wild before you reach another tributary. Even if somebody could survive going up that tributary, had the expeditionary expertise and the ability to survive getting shot at by arrows, if they could get up that tributary, now go cut perpendicular into the jungle, which I don't do on the solos, you can't, you can never, don't ever leave the river. But you're telling me that in that span of 70 miles between tiny tributaries at the edge of the world, no one's been there. None of us have been there. You know, maybe somebody 10,000 years ago was there, but we don't know what populations of things are there. We don't know what ruins are there. And so there's so much undiscovered stuff in the Amazon that is just waiting, just waiting. What What is the process of exploring that? So how, how does money get converted towards exploration? Is there Is there safe ways of doing that? There's places where, you know, we found out about things that have to be explored, mm -hmm. but where you you come up with, well, how do we do this without getting shot, and and all, and not only yeah. without getting shot, but also without endangering them too, because how stupid are we if we if we go in there to people that are living in the jungle, not bothering us, and we go insert ourselves into there because we're curious about some rocks, that that doesn't seem fair for the loss of life, and so like. Um, but yeah, that's that's something that we're working on. And like one thing, of course, is like LIDAR and stuff, but eventually, eventually at the end of everything, it comes down to boots on the ground. 